What is going on guys? If you haven't already been following along, I've been doing the one ton swap on my Jeep JK here. I'm doing a 14 bolt rear end, which means a Dana 60 front end from a Ford F350. Today, so I am tackling the rest of the steering right now. As you can see, my Jeep is already on the tires, already on the axles. So I'm gonna jump back in time to when I first started doing the steering. That does include doing the high steer arms, it includes doing a new drag link, a new tie rod, new everything. And I'm gonna give you a little uh, precursor here. I messed up. I messed up a couple times and let me show you what I did. If you notice, I have the high steer arms already on here. Uh, that is because when I was welding the axle truss, I welded the high steer arms on with it so I can weld everything all at once and then not have to worry about it later on. So we're gonna stop here. We're gonna go back to when I welded all that together. For my steering system, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a high steer kit. Now I went for the TRMR Customs high steer because the drag link and the tie rod are separated a little bit farther so the tie rod is sticking farther out away from the axle. I like that because I have the, uh, the ram assist that's gonna be going across there. It gives me a little bit more room. So depending on which steering system you're going to use using a high steer system, you might have to enlarge in these holes here. They have a one inch bolt. Yeah, one inch diameter bolt, that is huge. On the passenger side of the Dana 60 here, it's already enlarged to almost to uh, just shy of an inch. So that one's not gonna be very difficult. On the driver's side, however, that one is only at a half inch. Now that the passenger side is complete, it is time to do the driver's side. So I'm going to a five eighths, three fourths, and then an inch. So it'll help uh, kind of break it up a little bit and be easier to cut through in different increments. Uh, same process, keep the bits cool, oil them up, and just keep on drilling. Now that the hole is completely drilled out on both sides, uh, you want to get rid of all the excess burrs on here and all the excess uh, like lubrication and things that you put on there. So I'm going to take a flappy disc and just kind of smooth that all out. I'm going to do that for both sides, top and bottom. So as you can see, I have already pre-prepped and ground this down. This has got to be perfectly smooth right here. Mine had like a little bump on there, a little bit of lines on here, as you can see kind of on top. Um, all these knuckles are very, very close, but they're not exactly the same. That means these kits, they're going to be close, but they can't make them exactly the same for every single one. So you might have to do a little bit of cutting and grinding on there. And I'm going to show you how. First you want to do is kind of assemble the entire system together. Now these notches are made specifically to go with each part of the kit. So uh, it's pretty hard to put this together incorrectly. And then you're going to run that big old bolt straight through and uh, you're not going to tighten down all the way, but at least you're going to get the bolt through. So everything will line up and you can see exactly where this is hitting up against the knuckle. Okay. Crazy. It actually fits perfectly. I was not expecting that. Um, let's check the passenger side, see if that one fits perfectly. In the instructions, it specifically says that's not supposed to happen. But I guess I uh, got lucky on that one. Fortunately for you guys, I'm going to show you what I'm doing because this side did not quite line up, as you can see here. Uh, looking like uh, that center piece where the TMR logo is on there is a little bit too long. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit. And then I'll see how the, uh, the top and bottom pieces kind of uh, fit in there. So now that these are ground down, smoothed out, and they're down to the bare metal, it's time to tack weld this guy together. I'm going to be tack welding the bracket itself first before I uh, weld it to cast knuckle because the knuckle needs to be heated up a lot. So this next part is just going to be a little bit trickier. This is mild steel. The knuckle is cast steel. That means you're going to have to heat them both up between 350 and 400 degrees. So the best thing to do and just start heating it up. Digital thermometer here you can pick up on Amazon. I'll make sure and link this one in the description below. It was like 15 bucks. Um, I've used this for a lot of stuff, including inside my house, making sure, you know, my th fireplace is uh, putting out enough heat. Now that the other side has been completed, it is time to wrap these guys up for the night. They're sitting about 180 degrees on this side. That one's still a little warm. So I'm going to take a uh, blanket, 
I'm gonna completely wrap around this so it stays nice and warm so one doesn't cool a little bit faster than the other. All right, and we're back. So now that you see how the uh, high steer arm's on, we're gonna jump it over here and we're gonna start building the tie rod. So what are we gonna be doing about the steering? In all my research, I found three different options. There is the most expensive one, which is gonna be all aluminum. It was somewhere between $900 and $1,000. Then you got the steel kit, one and a half outside diameter with a quarter inch wall. That whole kit just bolts right in and that's uh, about five or 600 bucks there. Or the third option is the build your own kit with the Heim joints that I got from Barnes four wheel drive. This kit cost me, I think it was like 250, something like that. And it comes with absolutely everything you need, except the hardware. Everything else you need, all the bungs, everything to weld it all together. If you're doing this entire swap kind of like I am, then you already know how to weld. You already been going through all that. So this part is probably the best option. The Barnes four wheel drive kit does come with the one and a half inch outside diameter, one inch inside diameter. So quarter inch wall steel tubing. My thought process was uh, aluminum bends and flexes. Steel is a little more sturdy, but it's rigid. I'm going to incorporate both of them. So what I did is I went to the local metal store, or you can order them online, and get this one inch 7075 aluminum rod here to put inside of that steel pipe. So that way you have the flexing of the aluminum and the steel rigidness. Kind of best of both worlds there. As you can see, I already have these pieces of wood here clamped onto the rotor so then I can uh, measure from side to side and get pretty much as close to the toe as I can so then I can make the tie rod from that. You are gonna need to go to a local hardware store or a bolt store. We have uh, Tacoma screw and things like that here. Um, I got these from Ace Hardware. They're a little more expensive there, but it was really close. This is gonna be a three quarter inch by three inch long bolt plus the nut and I did the uh, the nylon nuts so they do lock in place a little bit better and I'll have to think, worry about that later on. First thing we gotta do is get it measured out. Grabbing a uh, tape measure, we're gonna use those pieces of wood to kind of uh, measure and get the toe pretty much where we want it. So we're gonna make sure the wheels are perfectly straight or actually uh, we'll probably do it with an ever so slight toe in. We can adjust it later, should be around right. So we're gonna measure from the front here and we're sitting at 67 and 5 eighths. Now let's go to the back side here. Now we're sitting just over 67 and 5 eighths. So as you can see, measuring out from side to side there, we got the uh, front towed in ever so slightly by uh, about an eighth of an inch. To prevent having to measure that back and forth every single time, I'm gonna measure out from the steering arms, the flat point on each of them. So anytime we adjust anything or bump anything, I can actually measure out the inside only and don't have to worry about the rest of it, having to measure back and forth, back and forth until we get it right. With the two joints and the bung sitting here, now we're just gonna measure out from this bung to this bung, and then that's what we're gonna be cutting our steel tube to. So you got 49 and 3 eighths. With the bung here, I'm not gonna be uh, tightening it up all the way or loosening it out all the way. I want a little bit of play in between to either loosen it or tighten it up so we can bring the wheels in and out with some adjustment later on. Back over here, we're gonna measure it out. Ooh. It is uh, ever so slightly short, see by a little tiny gap right here. We have a lot of adjustment to work with so we can pull it in a little bit and uh, kind of work with that. But it is in on both sides. I measured out from the arms to arms again and they are the correct width again. Still, that means this guy we can pull off, start welding on it. Let's do some math here. The full length of the tie rod is 49 and 3 8 inches long. We're gonna take an inch off of each side for the bungs, that's 47 and 3 8 inches of inside that we have for the length. The bar is 48 inches long. What I'm gonna do is take it two inches off of it. So it'll be 46 inches long inside of there, leaving about half an inch uh, between the aluminum and the bungs. Most of the uh, bending or anything is gonna happen in the middle anyway, so that should be fine there. So what you do wanna do, since the uh, outside diameter of this is one inch and the inside diameter of the other one is one inch, you're gonna take a flappy disc and take off uh, 
like a couple thousandths of an inch off of this. Not a lot, but just enough that it'll slide on in. Now with this cut, let's see if it works. It is slightly shorter than uh, I was expecting it to, but that is okay. Gives us a little extra leeway as we're getting this thing inside of here, and it'll definitely not bottom out the uh, the bungs this way. So now, just kind of. Put a little bit of a liquid wrench in there to help it slide a little better. And it's squirting up at me here. All right, so now I just gotta tap the rest of this one in so it's not flush anymore and we're good to go. I did also bevel the edges a little bit, make it a little bit more of a slope. So when it comes time to welding, we can weld it uh, more, more surface area from bung to the uh, tie rod. There we go. So with this bung, I am gonna do one root weld all the way around the inside here. After that, and it's gonna cool down for a little bit, I'm gonna come back and do a second pass where I do a super thick bead all the way around and really pull that pool of, uh, of metal. And that way it's uh, double strong and it will last forever. All right guys, and there we go. Got the welds nicely penetrated all the way through. Looks pretty good, if I won't say so myself. Uh, I will grind this all smooth so it looks a little bit nicer, then I'll paint over everything. All right, and there we go. Tie rod is now officially complete, less the paint. Um, that will be later, I won't film that, but uh, everything is all dialed in and I double checked and everything lines up exactly perfect. We have the same amount of threads on either side. So, tie rod's done. I am also gonna be adding on some knuckle pods and I'm gonna be using the uh, M-Power Indestructible Illumination. I saw these guys at SEMA 2022 and I came across their booth and I saw these lights. And what intrigued me about them is they are not glass. They are not plastic. They are silicone based LED lights. So they don't yellow, they don't chip, they don't fade. They're, they're indestructible. That to me is humongous. That is awesome, especially for knuckle pod lights. They're gonna be really low, really close to the dirt, and things will be kicked up and uh, I want the most durable lights you can get. These things are heavy duty. Everything is made out of metal. There's no plastic at all. Everything, well, except the, the plugs. And these, you can feel the silicone. These are the type of lights you wanna have for durability wise. Uh, I will link these in the description below for you guys because they are awesome. And just for giggles, let's do a, a quick little test of the lights. See how bright they really are. I know it doesn't seem too crazy inside of here because uh, it's just a garage, but dang, those things are bright. They are just under 6,000 lumens for the pair. That is super bright, especially for just being paused. So uh, let's get these things installed on the knuckles. Since we already have the high steer arms set out so far, the arms aren't gonna come in contact with the tire. So that means we have all this extra mounting space out here to mount these up. What I'm gonna do, just for ease of uh, later on, I'm gonna put the hole right in between these two little slots here. And there we go, super duper easy to put them in. Should have plenty of clearance from the tire and it's gonna be sitting far enough forward that it's gonna be shooting straight forward. Those are gonna look so good underneath there. Nice and sleek, but they're gonna be bright. I can't wait to try these things out. Now that the tie rod is on, um, we have to get the axle underneath the Jeep so then we can try and measure out the drag link. So I guess uh, I'm gonna jump forward until the axle is underneath the Jeep. All right, so super duper exciting. Not that Casey's here helping me out. You guys know Casey, he's been on the channel plenty of times with those little TJ. The axles are officially underneath. Okay, so we were running into an issue of we need to make sure that the axle is centered underneath the Jeep because the drag link has to go for a certain distance. We've got to measure it out. However, um, it's a lot harder to do without having a track bar, which I don't have yet. It's in the mail, so we're going to tackle it a different way. Put a laser up on here and I measured out the distance from side to side of 
where the center point is on the bumper, which is mounted to the frame. So that's pretty accurate. And then underneath here, you got the side to side on this little subframe piece between the two parts of the frame. Light of the laser on there, go down to the axle, and on the axle, see how far the, uh, the center point is from rotor to rotor. And then see how far off on the laser we are from the center line of the Jeep to the center line of the axle. That right there is a difference of an inch and a half. It's going to come towards the driver's side, which means the drag length when we measure out has to be an inch and a half shorter than what we measure out currently. I hope you guys followed that. Basically, we're doing an inch and a half shorter than what I'm going to measure right now. Tell me when you want me to press up. All right, go ahead. So as you can see here, just like the uh, tie rod, beveled the edges here and then use a file on the inside because the bung has to fit in the hole, like the bung hole. <laughs> we're gonna throw it in here, tap it on in, and then we're gonna do the same welding technique where I put a little bit of line on there for the initial weld and then come back and do the uh, full penetration. You gotta get good that show that? penetration on the bung hole. Good penetration on the bung hole. <laughs> Is that YouTube appropriate? <laughs> The bunghole and the bung. The stock track bar for Jeep JK does not work if you move your bracket with these one ton swaps. The point of moving the bracket forward is it will clear the pumpkin a lot more. The pumpkin for the front differential is a lot larger. So you want to move that track bar bracket forward to fully clear that differential so that means there's a little swoop that goes up with the uh, stock track bar that goes up and around it does not work you have to have a straight track bar for it to work i specifically got a do-it-yourself kit from rough stuff specialties it is made for a jeep xj bug and joe if you are watching this um yes I have Cherokee parts now officially going onto my Jeep. If you guys don't watch Goat Off-Road, they are also doing a one-ton swap in their Jeep Cherokee XJ. The front track bar is going to be just uh, standard DOM tubing, and it's going to have the bungs we're going to weld on the end. It is the same exact thing as we did for the, for the tie rod and the drag link. So it is that thick walled DOM tubing to make sure it's nice and sturdy. You can reuse the stock style adjustable track bar for the rear end. That one just bolts in and here we go. Uh, I did paint it because everything else is painted the same color. It had to paint it anyway and I'm just making everything match. So now it is time just to install this guy and do the front end alignment. So now it is time to start working on the ram assist. Yeah, um, I didn't calculate a couple things out. So let me show you uh, what I did wrong and what the fix is gonna be. So jump it up underneath here as you can see behind me, the steering is basically done, except the ram. So the steering ram is still just hanging here. It is still hooked up with my hoses from when I did it a long time ago. If you guys want to see this ram, how I set this up, I did it for under 300 bucks. If you want to see that one, I'll link that up here for you guys so you can see that. We got both the tie rod and the drag link perfectly aligned up in here, but we have issues with clearances. So the two options to go about it is, one, I have the ram assist hanging lower than the tie rod and going up the top of the tie rod. That is not ideal for one of two reasons here. First one, it is the lowest point at the front of the vehicle. For sure, I'm going to hit that with some rocks. That is bad. That is all you're steering right there. Two is it goes up at such drastic angle that it is not as effective as if it was straight across. So that means this tie rod, um, I am gonna drop it below the steering arm here. It still is gonna be substantially higher than stock, but this is gonna drop down about two inches, giving more clearance between the drag link and the tie rod, which means I can mount this a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, let's take a look and see how that mocks up. Now, 
now that there's so much more room, we can actually start tacking up and getting this uh, ram assist where we want to put it. So now that there's this much clearance, I can actually put the ram assist right on top up here. And that's going to give me a lot more of uh, an angle, or lack of angle I should say, for the st steering ram assist. And upon full flex, the tie rod and the drag link and the ram assist will not come in contact. So, yeah. And that is going to do it for this portion of the video here. If you want to see more about how I mount up this RAM, make sure to check out that video I made of how to do the whole RAM system. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we're going to see you guys next time.